Okay. And he's going to introduce my hoa here as soon as I close this out. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm. Many of you know, we, you guys have heard his music before. So you guys have danced hula for him before. We've seen him live before. So I'm just going to hello, hello. Uncle Kalani's beautiful bio to all of you folks. So a singer of power, sensitivity, and charisma, Kalani Pea made Hawaiian history, oh, excuse me, made Hawaiian music history when his debut album, Evalea, took home the 2017 Grammy Award for Best Regional Roots Music Album. In Hawaii that same year, he was awarded the Nahoku Hanohano Award, Hawaii's premier music award, for Best Hawaiian Contemporary Album, becoming the first Hawaiian recording artist to receive both awards on, for the same project. Accolades continue with his critically acclaimed second album, No Anei, which won the Regional Roots Grammy in 2019, topped the iTunes World Music Charts, and reached number 11 on Billboard's World Music Charts. In 2019, he achieved another first. He made his debut appearance at the prestigious Mary Monarch Hula Competition, singing one of his original songs for the Hula Group, then went on to take home the top honor. In 2020, he made his sold-out New York City debut at, as part of Lincoln Center's American Songbook, the first Hawaiian artist to be featured on the series. Self-described as Hawaiian contemporary soul, Mr. Pea was awarded, Mr. Pea was awarded a Native Arts and Culture Foundation Fellowship in 2018 and in 2019. He received the Artists in Business Leadership Fellowship from First People's Fund and was honored with a Distinguished Alumni Award by his alum alma mater, Colorado Mesa University. With his passion for perpetuating Hawaiian language, his albums feature his original Hawaiian songs alongside his affectionate arrangements and Hawaiian interpretations of some of his R&B favorites, reflecting the Western music he grew up with. Kalani Pea is a proud 2001 Hawaiian Immersion graduate of Kikula Onavihio Kalaniho Pu'u. Mr. Pea also has helped raise thousands of dollars for Alzheimer's Association due to the fact his grandmother currently suffers from this disease. Kalani Pea was Hawaii's state co-chair of the 2019 N Alzheimer's Walk campaign. Kalani Pea also donates money for the scholarship specifically for Hawaii students attending Colorado Mesa University and helped create scholarships for LGBTQ students. Now Laila in now Haumana. We have Uncle Kalani Pea here with us today. And before we start with Uncle, before I hand it off to him, I'm going to, I'm trying to get my, you know, you got to share on the same, get our presentation going here. And I'm going to share a little bit of videos to introduce Uncle and who I know him as. Kali Kali, sorry. Sharing should be easy, but I oh, you know, Kalani Pea. I'm gonna share some videos with you real quick. That has an ad. And the Grammy goes to Ewale Kalani Pe. You are so beautiful to me. Oh, mahalo ke akua. Mana ki a pau ka onayao. Ki maha mai Hawaii. A punio ko honua. Aloha mai kako. Aloha. I mahalo God. Akua. Gods and goddesses and the guardians for the protection, their love and guidance. I mahalo Dave Tutsuro, my producer. I mahalo Kamakolinzia Singh. 
all of the musicians on my album, I mahalo everyone who participated, believed in my debut album. Um, I also, I cannot, I'm overwhelmed with joy and happiness. I had a speech impediment at four years old and my mom introduced music to me. Music saved my life. I love you, mom. Aloha nui vauia oi, I love you. My other half, Alan, for being my believer, my backbone, my ivi kuo mo'o. I would like to state this from your sepaka ho'oluhi navahi okalani opu'u, a musician, a prolific artist, a lawyer, an educator. He says, hele aku au mika mana opa'a, I will strive for it with dignity. Paiyo aku au mika mana opa'a, I will Go forward like a warrior. I will win and wear that laurel of achievement that laid po'o with righteousness and equality for all. I am ready. I am ready to go in that boat and I'm ready to put that sail up with dignity, courage, and honor for my people, my Lahui Hawaii. I honor you, Sepa, and I honor all of you for your love and support. Grammy, family, and friends, aloha! Oi. Apparently, Auntie Lee is not the best at this one, sorry. The Grammy goes to Kalani Pear. Where are you? Does it mean correct? My O A O, my Moko Kiave, Kahi I Ikea, Kamahua, E Mohala Oya Puoka Lehua, I Maui Nuya Kava, Molo Ka Inuya Hina, Kawa I Mano Kalanipon, I Hau Pupu O Kahele Ladi, I Ola Moka Ola La Hawaii. The Hawaiian language shall live. Aloha! My mama's here. She looks young. She gave birth to this big boy. Horrible cesarean but women make real men. And I love my parents, my grandparents, for instilling cultural values and practices. The foundation of cultural learning and practices start at home. We must, we must instill the ike, the knowledge and wisdom to our children at home first. I would like to say mahalo, thank you, to my producer Dave Tutsuro, my entire band, Ayao, Wailao, everybody. I would like to say mahalo to the love of my life, Alan, my fiance of 10 years for being my market, digital marketing guru, my mama, my dad. I also like to say mahalo. Oh, he's such a queen, I love him. Um, I, I'm the real man in this situation. Um, I would like to mahalo my colleagues. I love you, Nahoa. I would like to mahalo my indie artists, my friends, indie, indies, independent artists. We work hard each and every day. I would like to dedicate No Ane'i is a title of my album, which means we belong here. Everyone in this room have a gift and talent. We are profound and prominent resources for the communities we serve. I would like to say mahalo. I will send this gift to my mama, Kahunani. I wrote a song for her. She suffers from Alzheimer's. And music is medicine for her. Music is healing for us all. We need to continue building bridges and collaborate as independent artists. Build bridges, not walls. I love you all. The Recording Academy, Haku Collective, Island Heritage Music. I love each and every one of you. Recording Academy, Pacific Northwest Chapter. Aloha Gaku! Aloha! Kalani Pea made history recently 
by winning a Grammy Award for Best Regional Roots Music Album for his debut CD, A Malaya, and whereas Kalani Pea's victory at the 59th Annual Grammy Award was the first since the category of Best Regional Roots Music Album was created in 2012 that a Hawaiian recording won. And Kalani Pea was the first winner in this category from a region outside of the Louisiana, Zydeco, or Cajun genres. So and whereas Kalani Pea has brought great honor and prestige so to his home of Hawaii by his Grammy Award to which he gave his acceptance speech in both Hawaiian and English. No, no, Layla. Everybody, and we would like to introduce you to Kalani Pea. Friend, you have to unmute yourself. A cry. Aloha kako. My kai na o put. Oh, you're gonna introduce. Oh, do I start? Okay, he can. My kai na ho o pula pula. O pana eva ika wa nui. No puna paya ala ikahala kahi ike ea kapaya o ia hala o ia hala maeva ikaua ke ia hala kupa o kaina kaina aloha o yosepa kaho o luhi navahi o kalani o puu kaina aloha o na kapikala ke kapikala o na ali ipiko pane po o ihua ka ihele apu ne o kahonua mai Hawaii i olekona Oregon my Olekona i Kololako, Colorado, aho i ho i Kaleponi, aho i ho i Kapalakiko, San Francisco, ua hua ka ihele na ali'i apau o kohonua. Pai i kamoku, ala nakila. Belina me ki aloha, ano ai, ano ai, aloha. 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 <laughs> I come from the Hawaiian homestead, which is equivalent to an Indian reservation, like you have some native friends out there, yeah? I come from a Hawaiian homestead called Panaeva. Lots of rain, lots of mildew, and Lealoha and I grew up in that because we had to. Our parents loved Hilo, so we loved Hilo. I'm also a proud graduate, of course, of Navahi Oklani Opu'u. Le Aloha, your kumu, Le Aloha, Kaula, Kumuhula, is my childhood friend. And we both graduated in 2001 from a Hawaiian language school, Navahi Oklani Opu'u. And as I identify the different places around the Northwest, our ali'i, our Hawaiian kings and queens loved getting on that moku. We call it pai ikamoku. They got on that boat and they got on that particular steamboat and traveled the world. Hawaiians, like your ancestors, your kupuna, your ancestors and forefathers got on a really big steamboat and left Hawaii and traveled and navigated around the world to meet leaders, and emperors from Thailand, Japan, San Francisco, presidents of the United States in San Francisco, Colorado, or even in Aloha, Oregon. Building relationships, collaborating, that is what Hawaiian people do. That is what your ancestors and your kupuna have done for thousands of years. I am a product of the Department of Education. Also, I am very, very, very honored to be part of this conversation with you. After my little uh, spiel about who I am and what I do and what gives me the passion and the motivation and the compassion to perpetuate Hawaiian language, I would like to hear from you. I would like to hear what aspires you, what gives you the passion to dance hula, 
Why, why do you chant about Lono or Laka or about these gods and deities? Why do they represent us? How does Hawaiian language play a role in your life, in your family? And why are you a proud Kanaka Hawaii? Why are you proud going to school boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, whoever's in this chat room, why do you go to school? Why do you go to work? And why do you tell people you are a proud Hawaiian living in Oregon? Why are you proud? You have to have an answer. You may not have an answer. You may have an answer tonight, yeah? You may probably write it and jot it down in your journal tonight. You probably write it, you probably do a TikTok about why you're a proud Hawaiian, yeah? TikTok, we all like TikTok and Snapchat, don't we? Perhaps it's not in my generation of time, but hey, there's a lot of people doing TikTok of all ages. Perhaps you can do a, you know, what is your learning outcome of all of this? Why, why do hula chanting, learning about the history of Haloa and why we come from Haloa define who we are as Hawaiian people. Think of that driving question, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. How does all of these things around us, natural and cultural elements, define you as a Hawaiian? And we'll get there soon. We'll get there later in the conversation. But let, let's start off with the Ho'olauna part. I was born, I'm not gonna tell you when I was born, I'm old. Uncle Kalani is nearly balding. We, in Hawaiian, we say, oh hule, oh hule, oh he la woho, no more hair. Some of you get more hair than Uncle Kalani. So I was born a long time ago in Hilo, Hawaii. And in preschool, at four years old, my mom put me into Head Start. Now, Head Start was for those who started Actually, they, they took care of toddlers, so like two, three years old, and then four and five-year-olds. So long story short, I had a speech problem. You guys probably know what a speech problem means. I had a hard time articulating words, saying certain phrases. So my mom was worried about my speech impediment. And so I went through speech therapy. And guess what? I didn't like the speech therapist at all. She scared me. She had this big, big, big glasses with huge prescriptions. And she was like, come on, Kalani, speak, learn this, learn. And she wasn't culturally and developmentally appropriate. Well, that's the key words. you got to be culturally and developmentally appropriate when you're a teacher. And I was terrified of her. So my mom pulled me out and she wondered, what can she do? What would she do to give me the opportunity to, to overcome this speech problem. Nothing, nothing else worked. I was four years old. I was just a child. And she heard me one day in this place, Yale Aloha, called JC Penney's in Kaiko'o Mall. And in the mall, she lost me in the den of the crowd. And I ran away from her. And security had to find me as I was serenading this mannequin in the window singing, I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, right? Aladdin. A whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. My mom looks at me and she says, what? He likes to sing. Well, first of all, don't run away from me, Kalani. There's lots of strangers out there. Don't run away from me. My mom went crazy, panicking, trying to find me, but realized at the end that I love to sing. And I come from a musical family. My parents, my mom's family play, uh, played in the luau, and then my dad's side family played the harmonica, guitar, so very musically inclined. So as I sit there singing to this mannequin, singing, a whole new world. And maybe Mayba can be the jasmine in this situation, yeah? On the magic carpet ride. 
my dad goes, no, Kalani is going to play football. And then my mom says, no, let's put him through choir. He loves to sing. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a passion, follow that passion. If you want to play football, you play football. Do not be forced to play that particular sport if you do not want to play. If you want to get into choir, if you want to get into hula, do what your heart tells you to do. Because when I tell people this, when you have this gut feeling and you, you, you have this desire to learn about things, those are the whispers of your kupuna. Those are the whispers of your ancestors telling you to follow your dream. Four years old, I remember vividly, mom and dad put me through choir. I learned how to sing songs. I learned how to sing Disney songs. I've also learned how to read music and start understanding the theory and ear training of music. I was four years old in an English speaking school. And all of a sudden in three or four years in, in that time period, until eight years old, my speech problem got better. But let's go back, let's pedal back. I went through kindergarten, first and second grade. And then I realized that my siblings younger than I wanted to speak Hawaiian. They wanted to olelo Hawaii. So my parents put them through punanaleo. If you guys have a notepad and you guys can do a research on this or write this down if you have a pen or paper, punana. Leo, P U Kahako and A and A, Leo, L E O, Pu Nana Leo. Pu Nana is a nest, Leo, the voice. So you put that in a metaphoric term, meaning a simile. What does that mean? The voice in a nest. Well, the voice, they have a mascot, which is their. Manu Oivi, a native bird in the nest. Maybe you guys can write it down on your paper. What does Kukumu, Uncle Kalani is trying to say when there's a school's mascot, a symbol, with a nest, like where, where birds lay their eggs, right? And why is there a bird being the voice in a nest? Think deeply. What does that mean? Take a moment to write that answer on a piece of paper. Why? Do we have a bird being a voice, singing Hawaiian music, maybe, maybe feeding their children, the little, little birds in their nest? Why is there a nest and why is there a bird? What is that simile? What is that metaphoric? What is that representing? What is that symbol? What does that mean to you? Let's take that 30 seconds. Write down your answer. Fifteen seconds. <laughs> what does a bird in a nest means to you? Well, Punanalea was established in 1983. Any of you born in 1983? I was born in 1983. Oh, you guys can figure out my age by now. Punanaleo is there to create a supportive environment where students and their families develop the ability to communicate effectively in the Olelo Hawaii, Hawaiian language, understand and appreciate Hawaiian culture and values, and participate in confidently in contemporary Hawaiian society. And number two, execute a program that ensures kindergarten readiness in areas of age appropriate social, intellectual, and perceptual motor skills. A preschool, the Manu Oivi, the native bird, is a representation or symbol of your parents, of the teachers. As that bird feeding the children, you are the children. We are the children in the nest. We hatch from the eggs, right? That's symbolic to breathing, a breath of new life. Ha! Breathing new air, starting to 
flourish in this world as a young chickling or whatever bird you want to be, whatever color you want to be. If you want to be a yellow, pink, purple bird, it's up to you. You choose whatever color you want to be. If you want to be a rainbow bird, whatever you want to be, you define who you are. And then there's this big bird in the nest feeding the knowledge, feeding their wisdom, right? A lot of you learn from your mom and dad and your grandma and grandpa, right? About being Hawaiian. Why do you do things that is Hawaiian? Why do you talk about the kukui that grows outside of your house? Why do you walk outside in Lanai and you see a particular lawa'e, uh, a fern, a Hawaiian fern, right? Why do you make lei? Why are these symbolic to you? Because it defines and describes who you are as Hawaiian. But I need you guys to think of these things because I'm gonna ask you individually later at the end of the session, we're gonna have a Q and A, right? When I talk story, yeah? And so going back to four years old, I was so jealous to see, well, let's go five, six, seven, seven, seven years old. I was extremely livid that my parents put my siblings in this Hawaiian immersion program called Punanaleo. And I was like, oh, I want to speak Hawaiian too, right? Don't you guys wake up in the morning and go, I want to dance hula with kumu hula, le aloha kaula. I want to dance because that is who you are. It's in you. It's in you. And so I wanted to learn. I'm like, well, I didn't say it like that. I said, why are you speaking Hawaiian? How, what can I speak Hawaiian? And I cried about it. And I cried through kindergarten, first grade, second grade. In order to be in this nest full of knowledge with teachers, the bird, that are your teachers and your parents that speaks the language, you're supposed to start from the nest, from preschool. So that makes me unqualified, disqualified, right? Because I wanted to be in that nest of knowledge to gain that insight, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, I was firm. I, in third grade, was a part of that nest. And I wanted to break that mold and that misconception and stereotype. What did I do? I went straight to the principal's office at Kyokaha Elementary, knock on that door, Principal, I am Kalani Pea, and I would like to speak the Hawaiian language like my siblings put me in the program. Transfer me from the English side to the Hawaiian language side. The principal looks at me and she goes, well, that is not my responsibility. I am the principal on the English language side. You may have to talk to the founders of Punanaleo, yeah? The bird, the nest, the preschool, the foundation, those who established the Hawaiian immersion programs. You must talk to them. And maybe they can decide to put you into the program. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Yeah, you guys. I you cried good. in front of Mahalo Ikewa. I cried. I said, I want to speak like my siblings who started in kindergarten. I want to learn. So Kumu Kawanoi Kamana and her husband, Pila Wilson, founders of that nest of birds, right? Punanaleo, of that foundation, of that organization, sat with me like this. And they said, Mr. Pea, why do you want to speak Hawaiian? Write this question down and think about it as I'm also talking to you. Students of Kumuhula Le Aloha Kaula, write this question and think about it because at the end we're going to talk about it. Why do you want to dance hula? Why do you dance hula? So, when that question came to me, why do you want to speak Hawaiian? Kalani, it's going to be difficult to start later 
you're supposed to start in preschool and kindergarten. Well, as I ask you students, did you guys start in kindergarten? Some of you may have started in kindergarten. Some of you may have started in preschool. Some of you may have started yesterday or last year or two years ago. But that doesn't make you any different because you are Hawaiian or if you're not Hawaiian in blood, you are passionate about learning our culture, learning about our heritage. I said that to them. I said, how dare you prohibit me from speaking my language? I want to learn like my siblings. I was one of the very first students in third grade throughout the state of Hawaii to start the, in the Hawaiian Immersion Program and go from a, com from a completely, like the schools that you attend, right? Everyone speaks fluently in English. You may have to, those speak Spanish, right? Here and there, different languages, diverse schools, but mainly your language is English, right? I went from speaking English in third grade and placed in a classroom with 20 students that started in preschool. I was behind, literally eight years behind them. I struggled, and I would say these words. I struggled. My terminology, my phrasing, the intonation, all of that was wrong. But you know what, guys? When you first start out learning about in Oli or start out doing Hela and Kaholo, it may not be perfect. But your kumu are there, your teachers are there to help you and guide you to perfect along the way and to do well along the way. That's what we do as Hawaiian people, yeah? Hawaiian way is not all about yourself. It's not all about you, 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 you. It's about working together so we can thrive together as one. I got into third grade and it took me two years to be a fluent speaker. Are you a hula dancer? And you, you'd think about this, students, and you can say, yes, I'm a hula dancer. Although I've been dancing for two years, right? Some of you have been dancing seven, 14. I don't know how long, but you are all hula practitioners. Congratulations. So going back from being the third grader going through fifth grade and sixth grade. Are we on the Makamua section right now? So we're I'm at the- yeah, Makamua, yeah, ho, I, hi, okay, ho, ikena, hi. Okay, yes. Hikena. You know, no, Leila, Makapapa Hiko, ladies and gentlemen, seventh grade, another lady comes in, breaking that mold. This is my family. You know how important family is? Ohana, right? Ohana means what? <laughs> they are your foundation. Write this word. The definition of foundation is kahua. K-A-H-U-A. -A. Kahua means your foundation. Kahua is your foundation. Your parents keep you aligned. Your grandparents keep you aligned. Everything starts at home. Values, cultural values, cultural norms, beliefs and values. Your family is your heart, your pico. What is pico? P-I-K-E-O, your umbilical cord, your pu'uvai. They are, are part of your pu'uhonua. The, the word right here, makamua, is from the very beginning. Know your foundation. Know where you come from. Whether you live in Portland, Oregon, you are Hawaiian no matter what. Okay, so in seventh grade, guess what? What happens in seventh grade, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? Seventh grade, Lealoha Kaula also breaks that stereotype and she walks in from an English speaking school to the Hawaiian Immersion Program. Hawaiian Immersion, you guys know what Hawaiian Immersion Program is? Everything is taught in Hawaiian. So what you learn in math, we learn all our math in Hawaiian. So if we have to say elua ho'ohui elua, two plus two, that's what it is. Math is make makika. So all of the students, you see all of the students with our, 
right here is my classmates. Look at my classmates. There's, there's only 12 of us that graduated, and we are basically like brothers and sisters. Some of them went to Punanaleo, yeah, like the bird in the nest, Punanaleo. They went to the Punanaleo preschool, and some of them started in kindergarten, and I am somewhere right there making faces between Kamale and Kili. And I, because I was just a clown, <laughs> I am very affectionate. Um, I, very touchy. That's my mo. Hawaiians are very affectionate. Yeah, Hawaiians like to cry and kiss and say aloha. And so I started in third grade, and Le Aloha is right there on Kili's shoulder because we all love each other because we're all brothers and sisters. She started in seventh grade. Did she have a difficult time? She surely did have a difficult time because it's all about getting into the groove, right? If you're a new kid on the block, right? If you're a new kid on the block, you're a new kid in school, it's kind of intimidating, right? When you go to a new school. So this, it was a challenge for your kumu, your kumu hula, because she actually was confident, but she had to learn the language eloquently. She had to learn how to olela hawaii. And did it stop us, ladies and gentlemen? Did it stop us? Ah, ole. Ah, ole, ah, ole, lo, iho, okuyama, ko. Nothing can stop or hinder us from doing what we love, speaking the language of our kupuna. And so, kumule aloha kaula and I learned Shakespeare in Hawaiian. Our English was taught in English, but let's say, we, our teachers spoke in Hawaiian like this. So we get into the English literature class and if we had to learn about pronouns and nouns and adjectives, she would say, Hawaiian language is the primary language. And if you spoke English, you'll get detention. You will get detention. Yeah, le aloha. And that would be writing, um, Puka Puka the the Sunset Magazine, <laughs> and the National Geographic. Home National of Geographic. Oh, man. English, you will have to copy paragraphs from the National Geographic on a on a paper. It was inter it was an interesting interesting disciplinary action, but if you want to speak English, get out, right? You want to go to English language school? There's Kyokaha Elementary, Waiakea Elementary. There's your school, right? They speak English. But if you want to speak Hawaiian fluently and learn everything Hawaii, you must speak in the hallways while you're taking pictures with your friends or you're doing a TikTok, right? Or you're doing Snapchat. You do all Hawaii. But your teachers will probably take away the phone. There's no contrabands, right? So you cannot do a TikTok. But if you do... If you communicate with your friends during lunch, during, uh, yeah, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, man, I haven't been teaching for four years. Recess. Recess, thank you. You have to olela Hawaii, right, Leola? You have to speak Hawaiian fluently. And then when you get into your father's or mother's car and you leave the campus, then if they know olela Hawaii, they speak with you. If they don't, they don't. My parents didn't learn Olelo Hawaii at a younger age. Did you know, boys and girls, that our parents fought for these programs? They want us to be the leaders of today and tomorrow because they didn't, they didn't get the chance to become that, to, to, to learn the language. So we have a lot of excuses from our parents and our grandparents going, it's too late. I don't want to learn the language. I don't, I don't know if I can learn it. If I can learn it in two years, you can learn. So, he, so before we get into the misconceptions, from the beginning, the, it, it's, it's hard. It was hard. It was hard speaking the language. But just like hula, right? When you aiha'a and you hella and you uwehe and you... Uwehe ami and slide, right? When you dance hula, it's not easy when your teacher is telling you, ai ha -a, right? And when you sweat, when you dance hula, you are not only working out, but you are connecting to the honua, 
you are connecting to the Aina. You are part of Oregon, right? And that may be a place where you were born and raised, but always remember in your heart that your parents made you who you are today, that you are a proud Hawaiian. Always remember that, that the foundation is your ohana. In Hawaiian, foundation is kahua. What is it? Kahua. Kahua. Yeah? Olako ke kahua o ko ohana. Aloa na pohana. Write the word pohana on your piece of paper, please. P O U H A N A. They are your pohana. They are your pillars. P I L L A R S. Meaning, and metaphorically meaning, symbolically, actually, actually, they significantly represent, they are your supporters, your guides to the foundation. And then you have your kaupoku, right? Kaupoku, which is, which is spelt K-A-U-P-O-K-U, and I think your kum was writing that in chat line, right? They are your, you have your roof, right? Your guidance, your teachers are your guidance, your kumuhula is your guidance, your parents are your guidance. And then in order to have the guidance, you must have pohana, po, those pillars, and you have your foundation. What does that complete you? Ahale. Everything starts at home. Ahale is what? A home. H-A-L-E. Ahale. So as we jump into misconceptions, let's jump into misconceptions and stereotypes. You guys probably face some misconceptions and stereotypes, yeah, every day, yeah? I wonder if some people thought that you guys are just Mexicans in Oregon, yeah? I wonder if people think you're Mexican and Paele, Popolo, maybe. Some of you only think, some people probably stereotype you and think you're Mexican or Native American only or Haole. Well, with us, misconceptions and breaking stereotypes. Kumul hula le aloha kaula and I. So you see this picture? I graduated from Navahi. Uh, well, I see it all on our left. That's my grandmother, my kahu nani, who has Alzheimer's. She supported my parents to put us in Hawaiian immersion program. My father supported us too, but my father was worried about us becoming successful in the real world. And remember, my dad is almost six, well, 60 something. So that's the mentality with some Hawaiians. They really thought that we would not do well in programs. But my mom was a big advocate too. My father, my father later, after 30 something years, <laughs> realized, oh, this program is successful. And that's me graduating from college. Oh, I graduated from Hawaiian language school and I went to college. So can you, boys and girls. You can speak Hawaiian whenever you want to and go to college. If you want to leave Oregon and come to Hawaii and go to UH Hawaii or UH University of Hawaii in Hilo, come on down. Come learn the language. I don't know if I, I don't know if that's a good thing to take you away from Kumuhula, Le Aloha Kaula, but it's okay to be that ali and get on that steamboat, yeah? So how do we break misconceptions and breaking stereotypes? Did you know that Kumul Hula Lealoha and I had to deal with big protests? Not the ones like we see out there, the riots. There were peaceful protests. There were some protests where our teachers and our parents had to fight for our programs. Did you know that we had to fight for monies? We cried and we were, we were angry that the political system didn't believe in the Hawaiian language schools. There were politicians, senators, saying that the students that will go to a Hawaiian immersion school speaking Hawaiian, learning math, social studies, history, physical education, are going to be dumb. Did you know that that happened to us when we were children? They said, they looked in our faces and they said, you are going to be dumb speaking a language. How does that make you feel, boys and girls? Our parents fought the system. So when, your when you have outsiders telling you, why do you dance hula? Hula is not for you. 
you have to be Hawaiian to dance hula. No, you don't have to. No, you don't have to. But if you're Hawaiian and you want to dance hula, you want to sing Hawaiian music and chant, do that. E hahai oi e ko iini. Follow your desires and your heart. And listen to ho'olono, ho'olohe, right? Write the word ho'olono. H-O, okino, o, l-o-n-o. To observe, be observant and listen distinctly. Listen carefully to the whispers of your ancestors telling you what you need to do. So the misconceptions, guess what, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, the politicians that didn't believe in our programs, that put us in, the Hawaiian immersion programs were put in basements and the English language schools had buildings and libraries. And there were, there were so many problems, we were treated like second class citizens. Do you think that's a good thing? No. But what do we do? I graduate from college to break that stereotype. It's okay to be bilingual and it's okay to speak your language. Okay, follow moi. So your family is part of who you are. Yeah, and get to meet people around the world, collaborate with wonderful people around the world, go to the Grammy Awards, meet up with Megan Trainer. I saw Cardi B there. Ah, Lizzo! And they get to learn about who we are as Hawaiians, learning Hawaiian music. Yeah, not everyone knows what hula and Hawaiian music is all about. And you have Kumu Hula, Lealoha Kaula right there on the bottom left, Dancy Kula. You would never know that we will end up at the Lincoln Center in New York City doing what we love. Why? Because it's who we are. She's a dancer, Hawaiian language practitioner. I'm a singer songwriter, Hawaiian language practitioner. And we are very close, right, right there. And then there's Mema Them. Dancing in Orlando, Kalehaleoka Lokilani, all of you award-winning hula dancers, beautiful. It's all about building that collaboration, learning about why politicians think a certain way and getting into the system. It's okay. It's okay to question, boys and girls. Why do they feel this way? Because I feel if you, if you learn, learn about history, I, your teachers will not teach you, but our kupuna, our ancestors were forbidden to speak the language. They were beaten at home for speaking English, and they were beaten in school for speaking Hawaiian. Our ancestors, your grandparents and great-grandparents were beaten for speaking Hawaiian. How does that make you feel, right? Angry hurt, distraught, disheartened, right? Not encouraged, right? You are feeling angry when you hear these stories that are true, that are accurate. So what do you do? You get into the system. You learn about the government. You learn about your history. You learn about the ali'i that have left a legacy for you. Their legacy is for you to be leaders of today and tomorrow, boys and girls, as Hawaiians. I sing because I love writing music about people I love, places I love. In Hawaiian, places, famous places mean vahipana, places that mean a lot to us, spelled W-A-H-I space P-A-N-A, -A, pana, meaning the beat, my heartbeat. What is that symbolic, right? When you go to a special place around the world, right? Like if you like going to Disneyland, if that's your vahi pana, your heart goes like this, right? It palpitates. <gasps> oh, I'm so happy to be in Disneyland. So like Hawaii, right? You go to the beach, pana, vahi pana. This is a place where your heart beats, palpitates. Isn't that beautiful? It means your famous place, a place where you love to dwell, a place of healing. For me, my vahipana is Hawaii. Boys and girls, 
all the people here all live in Hawaii. Their vahipana varies, right, throughout Hawaii. Some love Oahu, some love Maui, some love Hawaii. So you have to understand that you are always connected to Hawaii. No matter where you are around the world, whether you're in, you're in Oregon, whether you're in Seattle, whether you're dancing hula in New York City, yeah, or whether you're dancing hula in Seattle, and when I come back, you guys are dancing hula again to new music, you are always going to be Hawaiian, Kanaka, Hawaii. Never let anyone bring you down. Never let, never allow anyone at your school, never allow bullies to tell you that you're this and that. You tell them I'm Hawaiian and I'm proud and never treat us this way because we have, we are culturally rooted, right? You guys come from a beautiful family. I want you to stand firm for your beliefs and values. If you want to speak Hawaiian and learn about Haloa Makolel Hawaii, Go and do it. Follow your heart. Okay? So we have... Na kula kaipuni o keia. Ke kula o Navahio Kalani Pu'u is a public charter school that teaches academics and Hawaiian culture in the native Hawaiian language. That means that we use Hawaiian exclusively. For um, hi, Kalamai. So IT department is not that great here, but yeah. Um, okay, so I, I yeah, Okay. Oh yeah, my kai. Okay. 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 Where are the Hawaiian immersion schools? Um, the Hawaiian immersion, uh, the Hawaiian immersion students are today the graduates. So, as your parents, let's say your parents take you to Hawaii. Let's say you move away from Portland, right? And you you want to learn the Hawaiian language, and your parents put you in a Hawaiian immersion program. Where do we stand today as Hawaiian immersion programs? Well, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the programs are thriving. Our students are walking away with high SCT, ACT scores to go to college, prestigious colleges around the world, whether it's Stanford or whether it's um, Loyola Marymount or whether it's Portland State University or whether it's Colorado Mesa University. The Hawaiian language schools are growing immensely around Hawaii. We have started about 10, 15 years ago with nine to 10,000 Hawaiian language speakers. Today we have over 20,000 speakers and we're growing every five years. Where are we are today? We have bachelor's programs at the University of Hawaii at Manoa and Hilo. Go to Hilo first for Hawaiian language programs, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna learn about becoming a teacher or if you wanna learn about Hawaiian language programs, Go to UH Hilo. They have doctorate programs, masters, bachelor's programs. Can you imagine that building you see on the top left? We didn't have that before. When we were dealing with misconceptions and stereotypes, our Hawaiian language schools were placed in hallways. The Spanish speaking language programs and the Japanese language programs, they had buildings before us. Can you see the problem there? They never valued us in our own homeland. They never seek value. They placed us in hallways where people, the students walk. Our offices were in hallways. Today, we have two or three story buildings because why? Your parents and my parents and our grandparents fought for this. They want you to be the leaders of today and tomorrow. Hawaiian language schools of today is successful. We have those graduating as teachers, hula practitioners. I got my bachelor's degree and I'm working on my master's degree right now in public relations, mass communications, yes, and in minor and early childhood education, ECE. 
oh my goodness, education. We have doctorates. We have actually doctors, medical doctors who are Hawaiian immersion graduates. So if you want to learn, ladies and gentlemen, you can learn now. Okay, hold on one. So as we're thinking about, oh, and that's me in my sequin jacket. That was $150 on Amazon.com. Don't we love Amazon? Yeah, Amazon. Amazon. And so, Kumuhula Le Aloha Kaula's Dancing Kula, right? She tells you every gesture, the meaning of that through Mele, right? So you look at this question above here, right there in this PowerPoint. How does Hawaiian language define who we are as Hawaiians? Yeah, I want you to think about that tonight. Maybe that's a homework for you to write a paragraph, three sentences and think about why is, I know my, my, my PowerPoint is very, I know we've taken a lot of time talking about this. This can be an actual course itself a semester long, right? Learning about Hawaiian language, the history of Hawaiian language. Why was it banned? Why are we reviving and perpetuating Hawaiian language? But I'm gonna be honest, so many people are gonna bring doubt. Like they're gonna doubt you for, they're gonna, you call those haters. <laughs> so many people are gonna bring you down. Don't let them bring you down, right? If you wanna dance hula again, you dance hula because you're supposed to, because your kupuna is telling you to do that. You articulate those words, ladies and gentlemen, the importance of following your na'au, e ho'olono, me ko pepeyao, a ho'olohe, a ha'ai, i ko i'imi, follow your desire. It's not easy at first, but never tell yourself that it's hard. Never tell yourself, I am, I'm not going to learn the language. I can't do it because if you, I believe in the laws of attraction. If you think the language is hard to learn, then you're not going to learn it. <laughs> you have to be like that third grader, like the inner third grader, like myself or Le Aloha's seventh grade, like herself, finding that moment to dive into a program it's like swimming in the ocean and getting lost, right? Mm -hmm. You never know what the future holds, but you have to make that. You have to mold that. You have to create that. You have to be part of that movement, yeah? So think of this question. How does Hawaiian language define who you are? And how does hula and all of that you learn about being Hawaiian define you? What makes that, what makes this you, Hawaiian, what makes it Hawaiian? What, why do we do this? Why do you do Hawaiian things? That's a question for you. And I thank you guys for this time consideration. Okay. Hokai Ho, I have a video. I have a video of Uncle singing with us, sorry. It's a little one. In relationship, our Penny and Princess Ruth, Luta, Luka, Kikimiko, Olani, and you go suffering as
I know I have to. You know, little mistake, but it's okay. But we all make mistakes. It's fine. So that song, Vive Hia, <laughs> talks about our hometown Hilo. Have you guys been to Hilo, Hawaii? Yeah. Maybe you raise your hand. Yeah. Home of Mary Monarch. Yeah. Home of Hula, a Hawaiian language. Home of the Koki Frogs. So uh, we're from Hilo. But I talk about. The, um, Princess Ruth, I think you've just, have you taught them the, the behind the melee on this song? Uh, only the girls who, that learned the melee. Oh, they were dancing about a song that I wrote in five minutes while I was drinking Starbucks coffee. And I wrote this song to honor Princess Ruth Keeliko Lani. Can you guys write, and then maybe you can Google her. She's six feet, 400 something pounds, but she was a powerful princess. Powerful, just like Oprah Winfrey. Lots of money, lots of land. Right, Ruth Keelikolani. R U T H. I can write it in the Keelikolani. Princess. Great granddaughter of, she is the great granddaughter of King Kamehameha I, who united eight Hawaiian islands under um, one. United eight Hawaiian, United eight Hawaiian islands under one rule. His great granddaughter is Princess Ruth. She is first cousins with Princess Bernice Pawahi Bishop, who is the founder of Kamehameha Schools. I was a teacher there for ten years. <laughs> so, long story short, the Vihia Ohio talks about the beauty of Hilo. There was a huge lava flow, like Pele. Pele comes into this huge lava flow in 1881. And she almost damaged homes, ravaged homes in Hilo. And prior to that, Princess Ruth Keelikolani did an offering, yeah? When you go into someone's home, do you just go through someone's home? Do you just walk through or you knock on the door? You knock on the door, right? You ask for permission. So Princess Ruth did an offering of a chant of an oli. And then she did many, many offerings, offering her handkerchief, her silk lay, everything. And Pele didn't cease, Pele didn't stop. But Ruth Keelikolani in the song talks about her laying in front of Pele. And she sacrifices herself and she gives her entire 400 pounds, six feet body. And she tells the Pele, the goddess of Hawaiian volcanoes, our, our deity of, of, of lava and procreation of the earth. And she goes, if you go and you ruin the homes, Pele, if you go and the lava ruins the homes and kills our people in Hilo, our hometown, I will have to go with you. So Princess Ruth Lai, right in front of Pele and she lie and she, 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 she lays there actually, she lays and she says, if you take me, take me with you, Pele. And guess what happened? Pele stopped, her lava flow stopped. The power of that relationship between a natural element, between one deity, one, or between Pele and Princess Ruth is so symbolic today where we need to work together. There's so many people are gonna bring you down no matter what, but never have them stop you and from, from fulfilling your dreams, from doing what you love. Hololei, yes. You be that Princess Ruth Keelikolani. 
You be your sepako oluhi navihi. You be kamehameha. You be you, whoever you want to be. Learn about the language and never ever allow people to define who you are. You are Hawaiian. Oya kameani. Mahalo. Mahalo for this time. Mahalo. Happy you guys get to write down your notes and take that question in mind. How does hula and Hawaiian language define you as a Hawaiian? I want to hear some responses. Um, well, if we you do not dance hula, okay, you can also talk about why you are a Hawaiian practitioner, right? Why did you sign up for haloa, right? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. You can also answer that question because I know some of you are like, oh, I don't dance hula. That's, that's your other question, right? Why are you here? And Auntie Le would say you should. That's just me. <laughs> but and, you sign up. and all your hualelos, whatever hualelo you heard Uncle say, Auntie, um, put it into your guys' ha'avinaya for, this, for today. It, I put all the questions, so it's going to be in the Google form for you folks to answer. So I hope you guys took good notes, because I got all the hualelos that Uncle gave you guys. And all the little history points, too. What is your hula studio called? I don't know. One of my, hopefully one of my dancers could tell you. <laughs> Who's going to? Don't every, oh, go ahead, Kina. Kale halia o kalo kelani. Akai. Yes, Nicholas. Can someone else t uh, share what that means? What does Kalehalia o Kalokilani mean? Go ahead, Mima. The cherished ones of the yellow rose. And who is the yellow rose? What is the rose is symbolic to? Uncle's not asking me. <laughs> He's asking you guys who dance hula. Any, anybody? Anybody. Why, why is the rose important, friends? Why, why is the rose important to our halal? Go ahead, Mima. Oh, Mima. <laughs> it kind of represents our growth as a halal. What color, what color is our rose? Mele mele. And what, it, what does the mele mele represent? Kind of like... Not kind of, but <laughs> you know, friendship, Marys. Go on, yes. Joy. <laughs> what city do we live in, guys? The city of <gasps> city of roses. What is Portland known for? Portland. Yeah, Kahoku saying it over here without turning on the mic. Oh, Kahoku. Great. City of roses. Thank you. City of roses. Okay, so. Do you find when you guys go through your city and see all of this rose, does it make you happy? It, it's a vahipana. Make your heart feel a certain way. That, that's what vahipana is. It's not only a famous place or a, a sanctuary for you to feel happy. It's where you belong. It's okay to come from a city of roses and sing Hawaiian music and dance hula. It's okay to do that. So, it's okay. You'd be at the beach, be on top of Mount, uh, uh, of the mountain, or whatever mountains that you guys have. You guys have a ton of mountains. Yeah. You know, you Mom, we are cracking up at you. <laughs> you can, aloha, aloha. <laughs> so, living in Vancouver, Washington, ohana, oh, you know what? That is, if that's your safe place, your vahipana, if your heart tells you to be there, be there. But always remember that in you, you are Hawaiian. So why did you guys sign up? I want to hear responses. Why did you sign up for Halo? You guys know who Halo is. You guys know why we perpetuate Hawaiian language. Why I do it. What drives me. What, uh, what inspired your kumuhula le aloha kaula. Why are you guys in this in this zoom meeting why are we doing this? why are you learning about this why can someone answer that for me
You guys can just unmute yourselves and answer. Yeah. You don't have to raise your hand, just answer. What is the pinnacle of the, or the significance of this entire conversation? Okay, so uh, Kim Siu said, because we want to learn about culture and ancestors. Beautiful, beautiful. And with that in mind, more ku au hao, yeah, comes into mind. Okay, so I'm going to write that out. I know there's a kahako, and I'm sorry, le aloha alelo, yo na mekona no kei, yo kami pula. Mo o ku au hao, so mo o ku au hao, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That mo o, uh, uh, mo o ku au hao is your genealogy or your family history, right? You want to learn about your ancestors. Yeah, ask ask your family. Who is, who is my great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents and, like, who in the world established Aloha, Oregon? Because I'm sure it's not Aloha. It is Aloha. Why, why did Hawaiians travel to Oregon? I, you can ask those questions. There is someone out there that are part of your family that have family history. You are part <laughs> of that. La, la. La, la means L-A, Okina, Akako, L-A, Akako, La, la, L-A, L-A. That means a branch. They are a branch, a la, la of your of your uh, of your root of your of, of that stump of that kumulaau, mm. yeah. You want to learn about who you are. Some of you are descendants of ali'i. You guys are probably descendants of chiefs and chiefesses. Go and learn about them. By now, some of you are eight or nine years old. Did you know Kumule Aloha and I had to learn that we had to learn about our great grandparents where they come from. And I have a assignment sheet I did for my eighth, seven, eighth graders. I don't know if you want that as a copy, Leila, for their Ha'avina, about <laughs> finding out their great grandparents. It, it, it shows, I don't know if you have that Ho'olauna and then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my my Navihi, Komakova, Wuhana Komakova. So, yeah, if you want to dive into that, you should, boys and girls, you, you should learn about your great grandparents. You should, by now, you should have memorized names, your great grandparents' names by now. And that's what the that's what we do in Hawaiian immersion programs. You memorize that Oli, you memorize that Oli. You haiolelo, you you make a speech when the Queen of New Zealand comes and we have to do a whole keeper and greet them. And I get told that I have to make a speech, a five minute speech on the spot. And I'm like, what? No, you do it. You have to dive into it. Hawaiian style, you dive into it. You do it. No come oya come ponoi. Oya come haneya. You have to do it. You Hawaiian, Uncle, you can do it. Uncle Kalani was always our diver in our in our class when it came to I speaking. I was told to, that's why. Because he was the best one in our class to do oh, them. Mahalo. That's be real. And oh, yeah. We would have never we would have never told him that when we were in high school together. I know I don't know why they don't acknowledge me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my whole papa right there. Oh my well, goodness. Boys and girls, you're confident, yeah? You're confident about learning about your ancestors, uh, why we do certain things. So, what is, one last question, what is Haloa? You should especially know this if you took Haloa last year. Yeah, and if you guys took Haloa with Uncle Anakila in December. Also, yeah. Go ahead, Tina. Oh, Micah too. Oh, Micah, oh, okay, Micah who? Go, Micah, go, Micah. Uh, Haloa means everlasting breath. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Everlasting breath. So what does that is sim what is that symbolic to? What is that what does that mean? What does that mean for the people? Someone else can answer. Kina, you wanna answer that one? <laughs> Who is Haloa? Who is Haloa? Who is the first birth? From Papa and Wakea. Pololei. Pololei. Mahalo, mahalo, um, 10 year old. Our youngest, mahalo. Pakela ya oya. Yeah. We'll put a lot of po, ipa, ikela, and I'll put on a lot of kaka, ipila, and a kila. Oh, he have you no nui, pa. Honey, pelaha, pa, nui. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for friends, you know, the breath of life. So when I said Hanau ia o trust our kalani wani to fail kela ko uino holoka ova kabaka hiapo ola ola kahaloa ola ka ohana pea meaning long live the family lineage of the of the pea family long live 
my life, my family, the lineage and the legacy behind me. Ola, live. Not Ola, Komostas, not that Ola. Ola, O-L-A, life. Long live the heritage of our people. Long live your family. The legacy of your Ohana. Ola Kaha Loa. Wherever you are in, the hearts of many, as you go through middle school and in high school, remember who you are. You are from, you are descendants of kings and queens. You are descendants of Haloa. You are Hawaiian, and it's okay if you live in Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, and if you're dancing hula, it's okay if you make a mistake when you're dancing hula or speaking a certain way when you're trying to learn the language. It's okay to register for Hawaiian language courses. There's courses out there now. Kumule Aloha Kaula teaches as well. I'm, I'm probably going to start on workshops, but my other half thinks I, I won't have time because I'm caught up with life, touring, and living my dreams. And it's okay to learn about who you are. It's okay. My kai. My kai kela. You want to leave? You want to leave Portland and go to Kamehameha schools and dorm out on Oahu and be that lokelani and be that rose, that yellow rose, leaving your vahipana and go to Honolulu and attend Kamehameha schools with other Hawaiians. It's okay. Your parents probably will have a difficult time letting you go, leaving that punanaleo, that nest. Yeah, where they nurtured you. They were the big, you're the little birds, and there's the OEV bird. They nurtured you in that nest in Portland, in Vancouver. Now, if they want, if you want to leave that nest and come to Hawaii and learn about the language and about your culture, it's okay. Because always remember to return to that nest, that punana. Always remember to give back to your family and to give back to your community, boys and girls. Yes? Always give back. I'm trying to stay culturally appropriate for your age right now. I'm trying to stay culturally appropriate and developmentally appropriate. Always give back. Hololei, uh -huh. I. Can you say I? I. I. Mahalo nui for this time. I hope I, I was able to address main points about why I speak the language, what the difficulties of starting in the Hawaiian Immersion Programs, but overcoming those trials and tribulations and seeking triumphs, yeah? Don't we all want A plus and A's on our excellent reports, right? We want A's in school, right? You can be a prosperous Hawaiian because you are. Hana ikamea iponawai, do what is right for your family and for your community. And I have right there another auntie. Oh, I see another auntie. Aloha. <laughs> auntie Louise, yeah. Aloha. Alake. Aloha kawa. Pehe oi. Okay, so any other questions? I hope I covered what I could in an hour. You know, it's such oh, a, yeah. there's so much more. And Zoom meetings, you only can do so much. But when you're in an actual classroom setting, right? or you're in the field <laughs> firsthand, but it's okay. It's okay. Because one day you guys are going to want to come to Hawaii and do that when you're a little older or now. I'm sure your parents will be happy to let you go if you want to go to Kamehameha schools, yeah? Or Kekula or Navahi Oklahoma Opu Hawaiian Immersion Schools. It's okay. Leave Portland. They're all, Portland's always going to be there in Vancouver. The bears, the polar bears, whatever bears you guys get. Grizzly bears, they're always there. <laughs> Anybody have one more question for me? Questions, you know, anybody? <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. okay. Well, mahalo nui, Uncle Kalani. Mahalo. Mahalo Thank nui. You. Thank you. Students, thank you so much for your time and consideration. Heleo aloha ya okupaka ya pao. E holumu mai kai oko. Ke ya kauvela. Ke olu olu mai ho aloha hiya ikomo makua. Aho oluhi ya lako kekai. Meaning, 
don't stress out your parents during this summer because they don't have summer programs for you. Be good to your parents. Yeah? But we don't know if school starts in the fall, but do well. Online schools, yeah? Study hard. Be industrious, keen, diligent. Hawaiian children of Portland, Vancouver, Seattle, wherever you are in the Northwest, do what is right. Long live the legacies of your kupuna. Eola kahaloa, ola. Thank you. Mahalo, Uncle. Mahalo, Uncle. Thank you guys so much. Love you, Lelo. Hello, Nui, Love you. Okay. Malao, Bo, Meo, Emo, Hope. Kaliwa ole lako. No, um, he kio, he kio, um, e kaliana lako no kome do your homework, yeah? Yeah, Stop the recording.